thanks for this opportunity to share more information about COVID-19, but from a mathematical and statistical perspective, because mathematical modeling, when it comes to pandemics, it's extremely important to try to understand the actual wave, to try to understand the most important factors in, in relation to any pandemic. So, Let's start first with some information. So, because you asked me about the second wave, but first it's important to understand the most important characteristics of the first wave um, before actually trying to consider what are the possibilities of the second wave. So let's start with the most important factor in relation to um, such infectious diseases. It's the reproduction number. So basically, this number describes the amount of people that one transfers um, the uh, disease to other individuals. So like um, similar to what happened in other countries as well, the basic reproduction ratio, so it's the initial reproduction ratio, was 1 is to 2.5. So basically, two individuals okay, at the beginning of the pandemic was transferring this virus to another five people. But then, obviously, uh, we uh, started taking some decisions and based on the first restrictive measures, okay, after a couple of weeks, the reproduction ratio went down to 1 is to 1.5. So two individuals were transferring this virus to another three individuals. Still, if this value is greater than 1, um, uh, that is still an issue because it means that we have a spread. So it means that the number of increase, the number of cases are increasing in a way that obviously we need to uh, try to do other measures to control the pandemic. And then more decisions were taken. And in fact, recently I calculated through the mathematical modeling technique, again, the reproduction ratio, which then it went down to 1 is to 0 0.5. So only two individuals are transferring the virus to um, another individual. And this reproduction uh, ratio was calculated actually on a daily basis because this is important, it's the most important measure, it's the most important number to understand the spread of the disease in um, its respective country. So here we have the reproduction ratio day by day. So obviously here we started with a high reproduction ratio because at, uh, because at that time we didn't have any particular uh, restrictive uh, uh, measures. So then after uh, um, starting setting, um, uh, after having some restrictive measures, the reproduction ratio started to decrease at this point where we had the 1.5 and now we have a reproduction ratio which is less than 1. But does this mean that if the reproduction ratio is less than 1, it means that uh, we don't have uh, any more issues in relation to this uh, pandemic? Absolutely not. Because if we have cases in the community, there is still the chance to have a spread again of the disease. Okay, as long as even we have one case, uh, we need to ensure that there is still some level of social distancing. So when we start uh, removing some of the uh, restrictions, we still need to follow some level of social distancing. Because as I already said, even if we have one case, we need to be cautious. Okay, so that uh, we will not start um, the pandemic again and of and uh, obviously in that case not to risk to have the second wave or even if we have the second wave we can have a curve which is more flat than actually than the first wave in fact here we have the wave on a daily basis of uh, our first wave of the pandemic okay so obviously we have a number of uh, fluctuations we had the peak here um, and now we're having um, uh, a number of cases, which is obviously less than the number of cases that we have there. So, but in order to understand the Malta wave in a um, uh, in a more proper or in a more straightforward way, I converted the daily data into weekly information. So as uh, you can see here, we can see the wave week by week. So um, it's like we have better visibility of the wave. 
So we start obviously with few cases, then they started to increase. We reached the peak during the fifth week, and now we have a number of cases during the last week. Actually, we had a number of cases which is very similar to the first week of the pandemic in Malta. So this is all important information because this mathematical modeling is all dependent on the um, type of restrictions on the level of social distancing that currently we have in our country. So the mathematical modeling is all dependent on these uh, factors. So we know this information. So based on this information, now we can try to use it to understand better what we need to do actually to either prevent the second wave or to have a more flat wave if, um, if we had to have the second wave. If we had to look at other countries and um, just to compare Malta with other countries, First of all, let's look at Italy. So Italy, they, uh, they, are, they are having a different wave compared to Malta. So they had a sharp increase and then they had uh, a peak. But again, the number of cases are decreasing slowly, slowly. While in Malta, the number of cases decreased, decreased okay, in two weeks. Okay, So we had a sharp drop. Like, for example, other countries like UK, again, they had a rapid increase. Now um, they are having high number of cases on a daily basis but without actually right now seeing a decrease even for spain spain they had a rapid increase they had a peak then they had a decline but still they have um uh, they are seeing an, um, an increase in the number of cases south korea is the most um it's one of the most interesting cases and um, um i think we can compare malta with uh, south korea in particular why because here we're seeing that they had, yes, an increase in the number of cases. They had a peak for a small time period and they, they had a sharp decline, which is very similar to the wave of Malta. And then, okay, when they reached the last, um, the last few cases of the actual wave, now they are seeing some very few cases on a daily basis here, which they might call it either the end of the pandemic in their country, or as we can see that this might be again a second wave, which is very flat, okay? Which is uh, very flat. So this information is all important when um, when um, when working with mathematical modeling, because with this information we can try to understand the possibilities of the second wave, okay? Malta managed to um, uh, to have a wave which is uh, more flat when compared to other countries. In fact, for example, when we are having a reproduction ratio of 0 0.5 in other countries, um, like for example Italy and uh, uh, for example UK, um, they have a reproduction ratio which varies between 1.5 and 2. Spain as well. So. I mean, the reproduction ratio, as long as if it is greater than one, obviously, it is uh, something which is to be considered as something which is uh, worrying. So definitely, as I already said, even though the reproduction ratio, it is less than one, we still, as long as we have cases, we need to be uh, very cautious so that we will ensure that we don't have um, a new uh, um, um, uh, for example, spread of the disease, which might be um, an issue and uh, which, which might be an issue to the country.